Hello everyone, this is Hank. Today I'm back for another episode of Adobe Camera Raw. And today we are going to talk about a very special topic, at least for me, which is masking. Okay, uh, Masking has been recently added by ACR, and it is by far the biggest improvement uh, within ACR and Lightroom Classic added um, for that matter because these tools are almost identical. Okay, so with that, um, today I'm going to give you a very quick introductory into masking and my intention is to have additional videos that talk uh, more in depth on each of the capability of the masking. Okay, so uh, to get into the masking, you can either press the M for mask or you can just click on this one okay, to get into masking. And when you're in masking, it tells you to create a new mask. And it gives you three different options. One is a subject, the other one is sky, and the third one is a background. So when you select this, it said automatically select the background in the photo powered by AI. So that's the key for all three of these. Okay, so let's say if you want to choose a background to darken it or brighten it or whatever you want it to do, you click on this and uh, it will select it. It will change the color and show you where it is selected and what is not. Okay, now you notice that right now I have magenta. The default may not be magenta. I, I no longer remember what the default is, but to change it, all you have to do is click on it and then uh, pick your own color, okay? So it's fairly simple to do that. I think magenta is usually what I use because it is rather unnatural. So you don't have to mistake the, the natural color with the selection, okay? So what you're seeing here is the selection. Okay, so I can just reset this one for now because we're going to show you different feature. So the reverse of background would be the subject. So if you click on subject, it'll select the subject for you, right? And in the case that it select more than what you want, um, for example, if I just want the person, then it gives you the option of subtracting or adding, okay? So I can do subtract, and I have the choice of a whole bunch of things to subtract, okay? So, for example, um, I can do a select object because I don't really want this thing to be selected, and then I can just cover it like that, and it will subtract the entire thing for me very quickly, okay? So that is basically um, it will give me. So now if I wanted to select it something else, then I can just do an add and choose the method of, um, of adding. Okay, so, so I got the subject. And um, you can also select the sky. In this case, the sky is, uh, is here. And it does a fairly, fairly good job on the sky, right? So you, you have almost instantaneous selection without having to do a whole lot. So that is the strength of this um, masking um, feature. All right, so now, so you notice down here it's that people. It is programmed to detect all of the people that are big enough so the computer can recognize. In this example, there's only one person. It show that person, right, automatically for you. And then if you click on the person, the default is the entire person, right? You can unclick this, and then you can choose individual, facial, okay? Body, skin, you can add on to it, right? You can, you can also select, uh, let's say, clothes. Okay, so individually, all right? So for example, if, if I want to change the skin color or the skin brightness, then I can choose face or body. And then I can create a mask for it. Okay, so the mask has only got the selection that 
I want it. And you notice down here it said create two separate masks. Now I have a choice of making ACR doing two separate masks. Just in case, like say, the, the face skin needs more brightness than, you know, the body skin, for example. So, so it's a good idea to do create two masks. Similarly, I can choose just about everything, right? And click this one, and then I can create multiple masks at once if I want to. So it's very powerful. It allows you to do, you know, minute correction on just the area that you wanted to make the correction for. Okay. So uh, right now I'm not selecting anything. It just gives you the option. So so subject, sky, background, and person are automatic. It does it. It gives you the ability to fix, you know, the... Um, the mask, and uh, and we'll talk about each and every one of these options in detail in subsequent uh, videos. So don't worry too much about missing some of the things um, right now. Okay. So now that is the automatic part of it. Um, down here, it gives you the option to choose objects, uh, brush, linear gradient, radial gradient. In range and, and these are kind of require more uh, involvement from us okay to, to basically teach it so the first selection will be the object okay the object has two um, two methods within it one is you can make a rough selection uh, by a brush or you can make a selection by a marquee tool so for, for example, if I want to select the hat and the, the chair here, okay, with the marquee tool, I just basically draw a square around it and let go. And this thing will select the object that it thinks that I want. And normally it does a very good job. Okay, so that's how you get the, the masking from that similarly, instead of that, uh, I can use this method here, which is the selection method. And uh, this thing will give me a little bit more control because I can say I just want the hat instead of the whole thing. Then I can make a rough selection around it, let go. And hopefully it will choose it for me, which it did a perfect job for just the hat. Okay, so it's, it's used artificial intelligence. It does a, a very good job overall. Okay, so that is basically the selection that, that I would want. Okay, now the brush um, is a little trickier. It's more manual. Okay, um, it does have help when you select the auto mask. Okay, for example, if, if I wanted to select the orange flag, okay, the auto mask is going to help because it will be able to tell the difference between the black uh, color and the white color here. So if I just brush it, rough brush, right? And because of the auto masking, it doesn't select the black area or the white due to this. If I don't have it, it will do a worse job, for example. See, for example, if I do the green here, it will affect a whole bunch. So the auto masking is really good for that, and we will talk about that in more detail, right? So that's the brush. So you can just brush over what you want. And with the auto masking, it, it probably will help, but that is not very precise uh, method in general. All right, so that's a brush. Now, linear gradient is something that gives you a very quick and dirty selection that, for example, if you just want to darken this area up here, and you can just... Just click on on something like oh sorry wrong one 
I'm I'm going to um, reset it. Normally you do it from top to bottom, right? Like this. Okay, and then then you just quickly select the bright area, for example, um, and then you can make the change. Okay, so that's linear gradient is is useful for quick and dirty selection. Um, and it's very effective because you won't be able to tell. The gradation is so gradual that it's actually a pretty good um, uh, selection no normally. Okay, so radial gradient is just like linear except that it's, it's, it's elliptical. For example, you can just do it like that. Select the person and, you know, you can do a, a gradual uh, change like that. All right? So that's a uh, uh, radial gradient. And then uh, you have selection of range, okay? The range have two kinds. It, it's based on color or it's based on brightness, okay? So, for example, if you choose a color range, okay, then you can specify the range of color, for example, the orange. Click on the orange. Everything within the range of the orange is selected. Now, you can change the sample color, that's one, and you can refine it by narrowing the range. Okay, so now I narrow the range, it's no longer selecting the yellowish chairs now, it's just do the orange, more orange, right? Or I can just increase the range over to the right and then everything remotely orange is going to be selected, in, including the skin. So it's, it depends on what you want to do. Okay, the color range could be a very powerful uh, method. All right, so that's the color range. It gives you so many different options to make selection. You cannot go wrong. Again, we're going to go to range and do the luminance. Luminance is more simple. It doesn't care about the color. It just care about the brightness. For example, if I just wanted to reduce the highlights, the brightness, and then I just uh, use this thing, say I click on this. Okay, and then everything with that brightness range is going to be selected, and so I can do one fell soup. And of course, I could control the range Okay, by changing to these things. Okay, so I can quickly do the luminant range by moving this thing and the these two on the outside are the the fading. Okay, um, so you can do that. Okay, you can do more. Okay, or you can do less. Okay, in the middle, that would be the the true range uh, with a wide-ranging uh, feathering part of it here. So basically, you can also show the luminance mask here, but with the show overlay, it's the same thing, right? So that is how all of that works. Okay, so that, in a nutshell, is everything that this thing will allow you to do. Okay, just one more thing that, for example, if I select the sky, right, and I got the sky, and then the things that I can do to the sky are very much like everything that we have learned so far in the other edit panels. Okay, we can change the exposure, the contrast, the highlights. But it's only applicable to the highlighted area here, which is our mask. Okay? At any time, you can go and add and subtract the mask if you change your mind. So it's always here you can do that. You can invert it if you want, you know. And you can duplicate and invert, and you can do a whole bunch of different options on that. And we'll talk more about that later. But So... Um, you can do the color change. You can do saturation. You can do a color mixing, point color. Um, 
you can do the effects texture clarity dehaze. For example, in this example with the sky, the dehaze is the best. Okay, see, you can change the dehaze and it will actually bring some of the clouds and stuff that you don't even know existed by just changing that. And with a combination of that and the exposure, I think you can get a pretty decent looking sky versus something completely white. Okay, so basically that, uh, in a nutshell, uh, will give you the options to change everything uh, selectively. Okay, So in subsequent uh, videos, we're going to talk more about each and every one of the options, okay? With that, I'd like to thank you so much for staying with me until the end. I would really appreciate a like from you. And if you haven't subscribed, a subscription would be great. Thank you so much and see you in the next episode.